obviously I can't use tailstock support when I'm hollowing out the inside. Uh, but once I glue that cap on there, the inside will never be seen again. So it doesn't have to be a real smooth surface. Now the first couple of these I turn because I'm so far off my point of support, I'm probably going to get quite a bit of chatter and the inside surface is going to look like it was cut with a chainsaw, but it really doesn't matter because nobody's ever going to see the inside surface again. So I'm going to go ahead and hollow that out. It, the, uh, the only reason for hollowing it out is to reduce the weight, so it doesn't matter what the surface finish is like. going to check the depth. Uh, I can go a little deeper than that. Doesn't need to be too much. Okay, that should be good. Um, now what I will do <clears throat> is I'll use my uh, my cone center or 60 degree point or whatever you want to call it in that hole now to uh, let me finish turning the outside of the body without getting a bunch of uh, chatter because I'm so far from the chuck. Again, once I get, <coughs> once I work my way down to closer to the chuck, I won't need the uh, extra support, but when I'm this far out, I do need it. It doesn't need a lot of pressure, it's just to keep it from vibrating around on me too much. Okay, so now I'll sand that <clears throat> as much as I can reach. Once I turn the cap, I will be jam chucking that tenon into the cap. So let me finish turning the bottom and finish sanding the bottom. But uh, in the meantime, I can sand this part up near the top. And I'm just hitting it with 240 and 400 grit.
And I'll use the thin parting tool to part it off. So that's the first one done. I will I'll be using friction polish as my finish. Uh, and I'll put that on when I've got it jam chucked uh, <clears throat> in the cap so that uh, that will keep me from getting any finish on the glue surface of the tenon. So now I'm just going to uh, repeat the process. Scribe a couple lines here. Upon re reviewing the, the video segments of turning the acorn bodies, uh, I realized that I never uh, really explained too much about this stick. It's just something I stuck together when I was first turning these, and uh, when I was done that time, I stuck it in the drawer, and I've been using it ever since. Uh, it simply has the dimensions I, I need for the uh, the two holes I have to drill uh, in relation to the top of the acorn body. Um, the end of the stick doesn't matter at all. Uh, it's got you got to be far enough back so that the wood doesn't split when you're driving the screws in. Uh, but not so far back that it's going to interfere when you're trying to measure lay out the one that's right up close to the chuck jaws. Uh, but there's no significance at all to how much stick is sticking out on the end there. The pencil line represents the top of the acorn body. Uh, the distance from the top of the body to the center of the birdhouse entry hole is 7 sixteenths of an inch and the distance from the center of the entry hole to the center of the perch hole is one quarter of an inch. So uh, and I, those screws are not sharp pointed. They're, I can't remember whether I actually took a file and dulled them deliberately or whether they just worn from use. But uh, at this point they are not sharp and that's a good thing because it tends to burnish a line on the surface of the, uh, of the blank that I'm using for turning the bodies without actually having any depth to it so it's easy to sand the mark off after you uh, it's easy to, enough to see the burnish line and it's easy to sand the mark off once you're done so now I'll jump back into the uh, turning the rest of that blank into acorn bodies and I'll uh, speed the video up so it uh, You'll be able to see what's going on, but it's not the actual speed that I'm turning it. It's going to be running about five times actual turning speed. <laughs> 